Hey everyone, it is currently April 10th, which means we are about a third of our way into the month of April, which is also National Poetry Month. So in this video, I wanted to go ahead and share five easy ways you can help your K through two students celebrate National Poetry Month. If you haven't started teaching your students about poetry just yet, then this video will be great. And if you have already started, then you might get a few other ideas to sprinkle into your teaching this month. If you're ready to talk all things poetry, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Tip number one to help your students celebrate Poetry Month is to read a new poem every day. Now, this tip is simple enough, but it is the easiest way to get students to really listen to and understand all different types of poetry and hear how our poems sound different, right? Not every poet, not every poem is going to sound the same. That's kind of the fun of poetry. They all sound very different. As for where you can find kid-friendly poems, I've had a ton of luck just in the Scholastic Book Clubs. Um, over the years, I've collected this one right here. It's called Noisy Poems for a Busy Day. This one is called Firefly July. We also have Shout, Little Poems That Roar. And within each of these books, there are just fun illustrations and kid-friendly topics. Like this one's called Our Classroom Zoo. And they're just really fun for students to listen to. Some of them rhyme, some of them don't rhyme. They have great rhythm. As for some other ones, Shel Silverstein, of course classic. Shel Silverstein and Jack Perletsky are two of my favorite authors for kids poems. Um, they're probably two of the most famous poets for children, but any sort of Shel Silverstein book, you can probably find some of those scholastic ones I shared too in your local library, so go check those out. Another one I wanted to share if you have Spanish-speaking students in your classroom, this one is called Laughing Tomatoes and Other Spring Poems, and all of the poems in here are written in both English and Spanish. So that is a lot of fun. This one's called Morning Sun, and you could read it in English and in Spanish. And of course, if you can't get your hands on any children's poetry books, you can always go to poets.org. They have a whole section of kids' poems that are by many of the authors in those books, like Shel Silverstein and Jack Perletsky and a few others. So they're usually short, kid-friendly, and a lot of fun. I'll go ahead and link that site down in the description. Okay, the second way to have your students celebrate National Poetry Month is to have them compile a poetry folder. Now this can be a folder, it can be a notebook, it can be a binder, however you want to do this. You want students to actually create a pile of their own poems that they can read. So since you want them to read them, you know, K through two is going to have some different standards. In first and second grade at this time of year, you can probably photocopy a lot of the poems that you either find on that poet site or straight from your book. As long as you're not distributing them to other teachers, it's completely fine to go ahead and photocopy some of the pages, put a little three hole punch in it and have students put them in their binder. Now, again, I don't necessarily recommend it for every single poem that you read with your class because you do want to go over the poems. You want to read it aloud and have students follow. You want to choral read it. You want to have them, you know, highlight some sort of skill. Maybe you're looking for sensory words or maybe you're looking for rhyming words. Have them really dissect that poem. Doesn't need to be long. It could be like a 10 to 15 minute thing that you do at the beginning of your day or the beginning of your literacy block, but it's a great way for students to really read those poems and become more fluent in reading them. Now with your kindergarten students, you can't just copy most of the poems from one of the books because they won't be able to read it and they won't benefit too much from having just poems that they can look at. But there are plenty of decodable poetry options if you just search on TPT. I have my whole pack of phonics poems. Now these are not decodable but you can see here by this example that they are pretty easy to read and I have a whole system that I use with these poems where we actually will read it together, maybe we'll buddy read it, and then we're trying to find that phonics pattern. So through repetition and reading it a few times, students do become fluent in reading these poems and you can add those to their poetry binders. Now once they have their poetry binder it's fun because throughout the rest of the year during independent reading time or during daily five whatever time you have in your classroom for your students to read books they can also read from their poetry folder and of course they can take them home. 
All right, activity number three to help your students celebrate National Poetry Month is to have them visualize their poems. Now, I love teaching poetry for so many different reasons. In fact, I have a whole video about why you should teach poetry to your kids right here that I made last year. But one of the reasons is it really helps students visualize what's happening. They can listen to the poem, they can make those images in their brain, and they can go ahead and draw it. When I teach poetry, I talk a lot about how even though many of these poems are short, poets spend a lot of time very purposefully picking their words. So they'll choose lots of sensory words that really help the reader visualize and understand what's happening in their poem. They often try to make you feel something. When having your own students visualize a poem, there are so many different ways you could do this. You could choose one day a week and on your poem of the day, give students a blank piece of paper, have them close their eyes, listen to the poem a few times, and then draw what they see. If you do have my phonics poetry unit, you can see right here that for each each poem I have a visualize it sheet and on one side you will actually have students read the poem and they can read this the same way you would do without the visualizing sheet so you'll read it together a few times you'll highlight the phonics pattern but then I would have students read it one more time by themselves and then they can go ahead and draw a picture of what they see no matter how you have your students visualize, it's fun to make sure you have students compare their visualizations afterwards. It's fun to say, oh, I didn't picture that guy right there. I pictured him over here, or just the little discrepancies that they have. All right, so we have had students listen to and read a poem every day. We've had students compile their own poetry notebooks so they can read them over and over. And we've had students visualize poems. Activity number four is going to be to have students write their own poems. Teaching students to write poetry is such a fun break in the regular writing that we usually teach them. In fact, in first grade by this time, we would have already focused a lot on personal narratives, writing our opinions and defending them with reasons. By this point, we even would have finished up an entire informative all about writing book where we researched a topic and then wrote about what we learned. But now it's fun to like take a little break for a few weeks and learn different types of poems to write about. Now I do have a whole video Video about how I teach writing poetry to K through two students right here but just to give a quick little summary I do like to teach students how to write both form and free verse poetry so in the free verse side we talk a lot about writing sensory poems and we walk through how to do that we talk about writing feelings poems and we do that and then on the form side I teach students how to write things like shape poems and we come up with all sorts of fun ideas I also teach students how to write synquane poems and a acrostic poems, all sorts of fun stuff, but it's a really fun unit to kind of walk through what these poems might look like and sound like and then practice writing our own. I do have a writing poetry unit that looks like this over on TPT. I will go ahead and link that down in the description. That has all of the organizers and teacher examples for each type of poem that I would walk through with my students. And you can take that and use it in your classroom if you're interested. And activity number five to celebrate National Poetry Month is to host a poetry slam in your classroom. Now, hopefully you've been celebrating your students' work by doing either author's chairs, author celebrations, or just having them share their work throughout the year, but you don't wanna stop that when it comes to poetry. And I love teaching students how sometimes poets have their own special celebration, and they have their own readings called a poetry slam, where generally speaking, people will wear all black, they will go, and it's kind of like an open mic, and poets can go up and share their work. Just like with an author celebration, we are very attentive and we are listening to the poet but when they're done instead of clapping we actually do some snaps now you know a good five six years ago we would often invite parents in for a poetry slam we would bring little goldfish and apple juice to do a cheers at the end make it into a whole big thing if you can't have parents come into the classroom and listen to students read their poems you could of course just videotape it and send it home to the parents either on seesaw or upload it to an unlisted youtube video or something to share with the parents but it is so cute last year in kindergarten theo got to write an i like poem where they shared i think three or four things i like i like i like and something that they don't like at the end and the students got to share it but here's theo's it's so cute i like tarantulas i like video games i like dogs but i do not like flamingos 
Poems are nice too because they're generally short so you could go through an entire poetry slam in one writing block as opposed to some of the longer pieces that students may have written throughout the year. So there you have five different fun ways to celebrate National Poetry Month in your K through two classroom. Like I said, if you have not started teaching poetry yet, no worries. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas to make it pretty easy. Just hop on poets.org down below, get those kids poems and start reading them. Everything mentioned in this video will be linked in the description in case you wanna check it out. And as always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.